You are listening to Rootbound, a podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside. This is a Rootbound public service announcement, sharing the message that it is cool to like plants. I like plants, and I'm cool, right? I'm cool. Be cool and like plants. Hello, everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of Rootbound. I am the host of this show, and my name is Steve. Rootbound is the podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside, and each week, I invite a guest who joins me on the show to share with us all about a plant that means something to them, and then I share with a guest about a plant that means something to me, and through this process, we can all learn more about plants and learn more about each other. It is the philosophy of this podcast that everybody has at least one plant that is meaningful to them because plants are so integral to our lives as humans on this planet. But this episode is going to have a little bit different format than normal. So if you remember on the previous episode of Rootbound, we talked with Kaylee and we talked about DC Plant Week, which is this really cool event that celebrates plants and plant shops all over the greater Washington, D.C. area. Today, we're going to follow up and have a second episode in this little DC Plant Week series, and we're going to speak with the two co-founders of a different plant shop in D.C. But before we do that, I just want to remind the audience that Rootbound is an independent podcast. We don't have any real advertisements, only fake advertisements. And so even though we're speaking to some people who own a really cool plant shop, they did not pay me to talk to them and say how cool their plant shop is. I truly think that the guests we're about to speak to now are doing is actually really cool. So let's just jump right in and listen to that conversation. So I'm here with Danielle and Mignon, and we, where, first, where are we? <laughs> it's we're kind of here a strange in, location. We're here in Anacostia, inside of our wellness studio. But so, this, the, I mean, first of all, there's a little bit of an echo going on here. Maybe you can hear some sounds of like machinery in the distance, but uh, th- this is a wellness studio, but maybe it's, it's not quite a wellness studio yet. But let's, let's get into a little more details of, of that. So we're in the middle of construction. We're about 60 days or about three weeks from completion of our brand new brick and mortar located at 1913 MLK, um, Junior Avenue in Southeast. We have our new brick brick and mortar and experiential space. We'll have um, a wellness studio, a plant shop, and a cafe for co-working. And we're here in the middle of our wellness studio. So uh, this is really cool to be here like as it's still uh, under construction. And uh, I, we just got a little tour. You're with like a, a like a new employee, and I just got to kind of follow along as you showed him kind of what it's going to be like. And uh, it's really kind of fun for me to picture what it's going to be like pretty soon. It's a really really cool space. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so so let's rewind a little bit because uh, I have this tendency to just jump right into things, and I don't even know uh, what the company is called and what <laughs> what your company is and um, how we got to where we are today. Yeah, so our company is called Grounded. We are a wellness brand and we're reconnecting you to nature through houseplants. So initially our business started off as shipping houseplants all over the country. Oh, wow. Since then, um, we launched our business in 2020, so right amidst COVID. <laughs> um, but lucky for us, everyone got into plants and everyone needed something to help them disconnect during a crazy time. So we launched our business. Um, we've since then added plantarior design, mm-hmm. which is interior design with plants. And we also do corporate wellness. So we work with different businesses when they want to fulfill their wellness initiatives at work. So we'll ship plants to their employees, teach them workshops on how to disconnect after work. Um, and then now, year four, we're opening our first brick and mortar space. And we envision this space to just be all things grounded. So when you come in, you can be grounded by the plants in the front. You can drink tea and coffee and relax and then come into our wellness studio and actually like take a wellness class, meditation, Pilates, yoga, and all around you'll feel grounded when you walk into our space. That's super cool. Okay, um, let's, let's walk into the rest of the space a little bit. I do think I wanna head back to your, your current space just because of the construction noise that's uh, mm-hmm. next door. But I do, wanna, I do wanna maybe just go into the main space and hear what it's gonna be like so the audience can maybe visualize this really cool space because I, I, I got that experience just a second ago. It's perfect. 
So we're standing in the middle. Well, I'll let Mignon tell you about this. Yeah, it's, it's really big. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. 3,300 square feet. That's and so, so cool. And wow. so when you first, um, where we are now, we just came out of our wellness studio, and we're now entering into our cafe and co-working area. Cool. So right here to your left, you can see our cafe. We have this rock structure as our cafe, really tying in all natural elements yeah. into our space because it'll be so much plants. Mm -hmm. This kind of gives you like outdoors because... With Grounded, of course, we are reconnecting you to nature with houseplants. Mm -hmm. But we also understand that being out in nature is incomparable. Yeah. You have to be outside, hear the noises. Of course, not the construction noises, <laughs> <laughs> but the birds and having the sun on your face and feeling the wind. So we're kind of like recreating outdoors, but indoors. Yeah. Um, and so in our cafe, we recognize that, of course, seeing nature and seeing plants is proven to improve your wellness, mm -hmm. but also drinking tea, like using plants as a way to digest mm -hmm. wellness is also apparent. So we'll have a pretty large tea program and coffee. Cool. And we'll also have some light bites, which include different types of toast. We're oh, super excited about that. Wonderful. Man, um, this, I, I can't wait to come here. This is, like my, <laughs> this is totally my jam. I'm exactly. so excited. And then just to your, to your right, we have a co-working area and also an extension of our cafe. We'll have tables. Um, and There's chairs. Like built in benches here, but are there like planters in the back? Is exactly, that what that is? exactly. Oh, so, cool. so we'll have plants in the back. So yeah. you'll be all surrounded by greenery. You look up, there's green. You look to your back, yeah. there's green. Um, and you people, we want people to come in and not feel like they have to immediately like buy something and leave. It's like, come stay a while, come back for a wellness class, grab a tea, grab a coffee. Like, this is your home it's as like well. It's like the third space kind it, of thing. Oh, I'm so happy you said that because I love that term. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. We want it to be a third place. That's so cool. Um, okay. Well, I, I do, I, I think we should maybe head back to, you have like another kind of co-working area right now that you're kind of temporary in. Is that where you are? Well, so we are actually doing mini sessions with our yoga instructors. Oh, cool. And so we're just um, meeting our yoga instructors in person. They are doing their yoga classes, Pilates classes, and just getting a feel for what is to come in our wellness studio. And Daniel actually is um, overseeing our wellness cool. room, and so I'll let her talk let, about like all of the classes we have. That sounds cool. Let's actually head back to that other space, just because it's a little more quiet, as much as I'd love to just hang out in the space and imagine it. Um, there's a lot of construction happening right outside, so let's let's walk just down the block. Up. And then we'll, uh, we'll we'll pick up the conversation, but you know we can we can chat on the way and, and uh, we'll see what I edit. If it's not too loud out here. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. I like it's it's a it's a theater of the mind, you know, that you can hear that we're actually on the street, out on the street now. So yeah, is this a new building? Yes, brand new building. Um, they surveyed the space back in during COVID, before COVID, oh, wow. and. DC Housing, they moved their headquarters there, so there's over 200 um, employees inside of their building. That's cool. They did a really good job of making it uh, blend in with the um, the older, like, you know, exactly. traditional buildings here in, in, like, kind of like, this is like the heart of Anacostia, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so cool. So yeah, the, the space you're in now is the is the Anacostia Art Center, is that right? Yes, this is the space where we're holding our wellness practitioner cl uh, classes and sessions today. Cool, that's really cool. Anacostia Art Center, they've been amazing and supportive ever since we decided to come to Anacostia, so shout out to them. Awesome, that's so cool. Well, yeah, we'll hop back in there a second when it's a little bit more quiet and uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick up this interview. Okay, so we're, we're back with uh, Danielle and Mignon back in this kind of, you know, it's your, your temporary wellness space, is that fair to say? Uh, not totally, oh. just our temporary space for today. For today, okay, <laughs> okay, cool. So not, just a little bit more quieter, but just around, around the block from your new brick and mortar store, um, which once again is, is super cool. I'm really excited to see how that comes together. Um, let's back up a little bit. You know, the reason I got connected with you is because of this thing, DC Plant Week, which is, I think, super cool. And I'm wondering your thoughts about Plant Week how you got involved, all that stuff. Well, last year was our, was our second year participating. So. Yeah, yeah, last year was our second year participating. The DC plan community has been super welcoming and super supportive um, with us. We collaborated last year with Rewild um, on a giveaway, and this year Rewild is overseeing DC Plan Week and has taken over uh, DC Plan Week. So we're particularly excited about just like the unity that is being exhibited with all of the plant shops and 
um, groups coming together, being able to curate week-long activities, activations, workshops. We're actually having a picnic on oh, August fun. 24th in Anacostia Park right down the road from here. Gorgeous park on the water. We'll have like, there's a roller skating rink right behind us. We'll have DJs, um, food, and a whole bunch of other activities. Super cool. That's really cool. Um, and what do you think, you know, I think when I first heard about Plant Week, it was maybe last year, I was like, oh, that's a really cool idea, but I, I don't know if it's happening other, anywhere else in the world or if it's just a D.C. thing. And, like, what, what do you know about that idea of, like, having a week about plants, in, uh, plant stores, really? Yeah. It's definitely a much more new and modern uh concept to <laughs> us like we hadn't heard of it prior to dc plan week i know there's tons of different like arbor day like our business was founded during oh, earth day so yeah. we have earth week and that's like huge for us and that's huge globally but mm-hmm. dc plan week i would say is definitely revolutionizing that concept that's super cool i wonder i wonder if there's any other cities going to get on board with uh, the idea of having a, a plant week because right. yeah it's like it's like restaurant week but like for plants which exactly is so cool. yeah. <laughs> um so let's let's go back a little bit. So I think it's pretty interesting that you, you your business started entirely online. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we started online. We actually ideated, grounded in October of 2019, and it started from a tweet that <laughs> spoke about um, all plant owners. 33% of all plant owners are millennials, mm. and Daniel and I are both millennials, and we're like, this is us. We probably take up like that whole statistic. <laughs> um, and then we were like, okay, we want to open a plant shop. We want it to be on Earth Day. It's going to be perfect. Like, what better holiday or day to open our business? And then COVID happened, <laughs> and yeah, from there, it's just been a crazy whirlwind. Oh. I just wanted to say, like, what better way than to start a company called Grounded and launch it on Earth Day? Yeah. And from the very beginning, we, like, wanted wellness to be at the forefront of our of our business. So as Mignon just mentioned, like, really taking the word grounded and making it expansive and bringing that word and that name to life beyond just it being our company identity, but really aligning our mission with the name. It's, it's just a beautiful full circle moment, but I think you were going to continue on with the story. Oh, okay. I, I was just going to say, but yeah, I mean, we launched as COVID approached, we had no idea that there was going to be a pandemic. So <laughs> it just so happens that Mignon and I were reading hundreds of articles, papers about the many benefits of nature and how therapeutic it is to your wellness. And then specifically houseplants, houseplants direct impact to physical and mental wellness within the space, indoor houseplants in particular. And Mignon and I were just just both inspired and bonded over how impactful caring for houseplants had been for us and our families and the generations way before us, just how people engage with nature, use houseplants as a way to um, disconnect from society. And as we approached COVID, we were definitely um, just, I would say compassionate about everything that was going on. And we definitely questioned whether or not people would still feel inclined to buy and support um, our company because it was such a disruptive time in society, arguably one of the, um, definitely it's gonna go down in history as one of the craziest moments (laughs) um, in time. Um, But just being able to have a mission that seamlessly aligned with the times has been, a great experience and even to this point of evolving into a brick and mortar that's that's, that's been just, full circle was your was your plan always to be online from the beginning was that how you started yeah that was very lucky because <laughs> oh my god we so i was living here in dc Daniel yeah. well was living in new york at the time uh-huh. and our whole idea was like okay i'm gonna have like 10 plants in my house you're gonna have 10 plants in your house and we'll mm. just see how it goes mm-hmm. but then the day of our launch um you have moved back since then yeah, she Yeah, she moved back to the area and we were like, okay, let's just see how it goes. We're going to start online and then like see mm-hmm. how everything flows out. And it just so happened that everyone started to purchase online. I feel yeah. like my grandma might have bought something online because <laughs> you the had first to. Time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Okay, okay, so the thing that I'm always curious about and I think, you know, strangely on the podcast actually the first time I visited a plant store on the podcast was last week at Rewild so I haven't been in the plant shop space I've also told everyone that 
I'm kind of not much of a house plant guy. I'm more, I'm, I'm more like an outdoor gardening kind of guy, but I'm, I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> but I'm always curious about, uh, and, and this is a question for each of you, uh, how, how you got into plants. Like, how, why did this capture you? Why is this your passion? Why did you decide to start a business about plants? Um, for me, I grew up around plants always being in the house. My mom always had plants. My grandmother had plants. My aunts. We always kept our house super green. Mm-hmm. And I would say probably for me about like kind of around the time when Danielle and I first became friends, which I can't even remember, eight years ago? Mm-hmm. About eight mm-hmm. years ago, I was super into plants. People always be like, plant mom, plant mom, how do I take <laughs> care of my plants? And then... I think for both of us, we were collecting all of this information from our aunts, our moms, our grandmothers about how to care for your plants. My mom would be like, put coffee grinds in your plants, Mm -hmm. using natural fertilizer, stuff that's already in the house to care for our plants. So just both of us collecting that information, we're like, we should share this with our community, with our friends, and just see where it goes. So for me, definitely my family being Mm -hmm. around nature. Um, When I was younger, my mom used to encourage me and my brother to have an at-home garden. Mm. Um, And we would have it in our backyard. We didn't have like a whole yard, Mm -hmm. but just like... A deck garden mm-hmm. and so nature has always been super important just playing outside being around greenery so now that we started our business it's so nice to understand why that made us feel good mm-hmm. and then expressing that to our community on like why people tell you take a walk when you're upset or be outside or tend to your plants is there uh, just before we continue on to Daniel just one last question there is there a particular plant from like your youth that you remember the first time being like oh I, I understand this or like I don't know. I always curious about like those plants that like like touch you first, you know. Ooh, for me, I would say pothos, mm-hmm. like golden pothos. Mm-hmm. I feel like I always remember seeing those plants, seeing them vining all over the place. Um, so yeah, that the yeah. golden pothos would be like the most well-known plant I remember from like my childhood until now. Very cool. Okay, Danielle, yeah, how did you get into plants? How did this become your thing? Similarly to Mignon, I grew up always seeing greenery in all the spaces, all my familial spaces that I occupy, whether it was our house and my mom's plant collection or going to Pittsburgh to see my grandparents, my aunts, my whole, my parents and I, I I was born in Pittsburgh and we Mm -hmm. moved um, to Alexandria when I was five years old. But going back to visit Pittsburgh, which is a heavily industrial city and just all of the smoke and it's inner Mm -hmm. city so I feel like seeing the women of my family care for their houseplant collections it was sort of like their own haven I just saw like how much pride they had in their houseplants Mm -hmm. my aunt's my aunt's collection both of my aunts my um paternal aunt my dad's sister and my mom's sister they both had crazy plant collections and I just remember all the plants just looking uh, thriving. I remember them watering them. They had like jugs mm-hmm. that they would reuse and uh, gallon, gallon like milk jugs to rewater to water their plants. So I was just always inspired by that. And I know you asked this question about a particular plant, mm-hmm. but I remember my mom, my older brother. He gave my mom a small spider plant in fourth grade um, when he was in fourth grade, mm-hmm. and he grew up with that plant. My wow. brother is about. 14 years older than me so he grew up with that plant and then I grew up and my younger brother grew up with that same plant wow. and it was a spider plant and my mom says it was about four inches in diameter originally and then eventually um, by the time I was about 12 13 years old it might have been about 14 inches in diameter and it was super huge and it traveled with us as we would migrate to or move to different spaces and areas but that's like a plant that really I remember also seeing that like in my aunt's mm-hmm. house and both of my aunt's house, they had spider plants. So as I was building my collection around the same time as Mignon, 2015, 2016, the spider plant was one of my first plants that I ordered online. Mm-hmm. I ordered it from Etsy from a small, um, a small business mm-hmm. or a small shop. I'll have to go back and check them out <laughs> now that we've started Grounded. But yeah, that was sort of like my evolution into getting inspired about greenery, just using it as a therapeutic, caring for it, taking pride in it, into caring for something. And then as we've built and grown Grounded, 
I just started hearing all these anecdotes about my family and their history and connection to nature, whether it's my great grandfather who had a garden plot in the middle of Pittsburgh that people mm. said wouldn't grow. It's like in the middle middle of the uh, middle of the hood. They're like, ain't nothing going to grow in there. <laughs> and my uncle told me that he put um, newspaper into the into the soil of this like parking lot essentially. And by the springtime, everything was in full bloom. Wow. He was able to, of course, sell some produce, give some produce away. But that was like sort of the first antidote that I ha had heard about my family interacting with nature. And then prior to that, understanding like my family tree, their history and being sharecroppers. And I think that for black people in particular, like being outdoors and using nature, because we had to be resourceful, it's not really so much of a it's not really a new practice when mm. I really look back at it and really reflect on it. And I think that with Grounded, um, having those, learning that family history and then seeing the many ways we've expanded our brand and be, having, like collaborating with farms and all these small things, they just feel like full circle moments. Mm -hmm. And then hearing like the family stories and stuff like that just really makes, it, makes me feel um, fulfilled with like this being like my purpose um, alongside Mingon. That's so so fascinating. I, I one thing I didn't expect when starting this podcast is how often plants connect people to family history. Yeah, and it's so amazing, and that's a really amazing story. So one question I have is is how did you meet, become friends, and then decide to start a business together, which is like a big move, you know, especially <laughs> in a friendship. Maybe I, I don't know if you have anything to say about that. Yeah, um, like I mentioned before, she and I met around like eight years ago mm -hmm. through a mutual friend and. We were just like millennial girls talking about <laughs> plants and food and fashion, but the plants were like our big thing we would always talk about. Mm -hmm. While she was living in New York, she would always send me pictures of her plants. <laughs> she had like a 20 foot long pothos in her apartment. Wow. It was like super long. She was like, look at my plant. Look how it's growing. And I'm like, oh, look at my plants. And I had her growing. Um, but that tweet that I mentioned, that was mm -hmm. like the turn of our friendship. Um, and it really started off so lighthearted. Mm -hmm. It was just like a tweet where like, oh, this is cool. Like, we're gonna start a plant shop, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I will say Daniel was like, oh, like, we should get serious about this. Like, let's mm -hmm. plan, let's actually plan how we could make this happen. And so from there, we would meet every week. We had like a meeting that we would do <laughs> on Zoom. We still have that same weekly meeting. Yeah, we oh, still yeah. have the same weekly meeting. We were like, okay, what's gonna be like, our tone, what's gonna be our niche. Like, we really started off looking at what will make us different from any other plant shop because people sell plants online. Mm -hmm. We're not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. But I think our approach at centering m mental health and wellness mm -hmm. at the center of our business is something that's different. And also being women of color mm -hmm. and having that different perspective, um, I think that disrupted the market completely. So, you know, I do think, you know, a lot of people, they're like, oh, you're starting a business with your friend. How is that? Mm -hmm. It's great because I feel like we, we're on the same page mm -hmm. when we need to be. And then we're also able to be like, mm, I think this could be better. I think that can be better. Um, so I think it, it wouldn't have, I don't, I think about all my other friends and I love them to death, but I'm like, I don't think we could have had a business together. <laughs> So it's like match made in heaven. <laughs> That's so cool. And okay, what about this big step of moving from an online business, which um, definitely complicated, but to having an actual physical space, which I think, I guess, adds, I don't run a business, but I guess adds a whole new level of complication to it. And so if you can talk about that, like uh, that decision to make that move. Oh, it's in perfect alignment. We're particularly excited about, so just one step back. We sold 700 plants in 30 minutes. So, Whoa. yeah, so we actually offer free shipping. Mm -hmm. So out of the 700 plants, maybe about 65% were from this area, mm. the orders. So we have customers in DC, Maryland, Northern Virginia. Mm. Uh, we ended up hand delivering all of the plants to all of those people in this area. And that's a great idea. I yeah. Love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe not for your, uh, your uh, 
Well, no, it sounds a great idea. It sounds now, difficult, but a great idea. It was absolutely just crazy. Like sometimes when we're sharing our story, it's crazy mm-hmm. to look back and think about just the measures that we took from the very beginning to be so passionate and connected mm-hmm. to our purpose. We're like, we're going to hand deliver these plants. I ended up delivering, because I'm from Alexandria, all of the Northern Virginia um, plants, Lorton, Springfield, um, just oh, little wow. nooks and crannies of Arlington, Alexandria. And then I also delivered to PG County. Manion, of course, being a D.C. native, she delivered in parts all around D.C. I remember her telling me, you know, she she's born here and raised mm-hmm. here. So she had seen part been in parts that she didn't even know existed or had been new, <laughs> had been new to her. So it was really nice to build that connection with mm-hmm. the community here early on from when mm-hmm. we first launched. Mm-hmm. Now, the 35 percent of plants that were purchased. Um, Those came from all around the country. Mm -hmm. So LA, Texas, New York. I mean, I love to say that we've shipped about 30,000 plants since 2020. And um, we have a plant in every major metropolitan area around Mm -hmm. the country. So Detroit, LA, Houston, Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, Mm -hmm. New York, DC, of course, Miami. Any city, Seattle, Phoenix, Denver, any major metropolitan area you can think of, there's a grounded plant. There's even plants in small areas of like Montana and Minnesota Mm -hmm. that we didn't know, (laughs) that we never had heard of. But I say all of that to say that is that since then, we've been nurturing all of those relationships with people Mm -hmm. all around the country. So we're excited to have this experiential retail space where people can experience what we've offered online in person when they Mm -hmm. visit D.C., so getting our favorite customers in L.A., shout out to Melanie. Um, mm-hmm. She supported us. She's purchased almost every plant from Ground In, mm-hmm. um, has been one of our day ones. But we think about our customers like that, that mm-hmm. have we built that relationship with, that trust and love our brand, and that will be excited when we're opening up a physical space. Mm-hmm. And, of course, our hometown community and having everyone in this region that we saw. We still have friends that come to our events. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, no one's ever pressured or asked us about opening the space. I mean, I think people have said, you guys should get a space or you guys, you know, they, they enjoy coming to our office, but mm-hmm. we're really passionate about having that space for those people that have supported us from day one and live here and live, you know, coast to coast. So mm-hmm. bringing, um, on, we're not exactly moving away from online, but just really amplifying the, mm-hmm. the direct to consumer experience with now being directly um, able and accessible to our community and and really taking our uh, our marketing to the next level with having this physical location and getting people excited about experiencing grounded in its physicality that's that's really interesting because I, I never thought about it this way before but you know plants aren't aren't the normal thing that you buy online and we talked about this, I talked about this on, on the episode with uh, Kaylee from rewild and other times of the show about how often plants are treated just like normal products, but they're not, they're living things. And that connection to a place is important. And so it seems very natural to like, even though your stores are online, to have it like connected to a place and be coming from here. So that's, I think really, really cool. Exactly, we like to say we're laying our roots in Anacostia. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's really cool. I I wonder, um, how did you decide on where you wanted your plant shop to be? Yeah, so automatically, I feel like for most people, they're like, oh, U Street, H Street, all Mm -hmm. of the high traffic areas. But when we really thought about who would most benefit from our mission, which is enhancing your wellness and being around nature and greenery, Anacostia was like the first choice. Mm -hmm. We're like, this would be perfect. Um, If you look on the map, the amount of greenery in Ward 8 is a lot less than Mm -hmm. all the other wards. Of course, we have Anacostia Park, but Mm -hmm. that's really one of the only major green spaces in this area. Mm -hmm. And so for us, just like I mentioned to you when we were in there, all the natural elements, having plants everywhere, is kind of recreating that green space, but indoors. Mm -hmm. And so we felt like bringing a wellness studio to this area where so many people suffer from mental health, mental illness, Mm -hmm. can come into our space, be able to enjoy it, be able to improve their wellness, and feel welcomed in a space that is owned by us. Um, also, I went to high school like three blocks from here. Oh, cool. And so it's like a full circle moment to be able to serve this community. Um, I feel like high school was such like a transformative time for me. And so 
being able to be here and go to my high school and talk to the principal, like, hey, we want your kids to be able to come here and take wellness classes. Um, Anacostia High School, we've been in contact with them about bringing their students here. So it's like the perfect, like, full circle moment to come back here and be able to offer the community something positive. That's super, super cool. I, yeah. Um, I mean, I think this area is got so much, like, going on for it and, and having this space that can be, like, the third place, like we mentioned before, of, like, people to meet in, like, a, a center is, is really cool. And then still being able to, like, you know, have the online side of things and, and, and connect with other people around the world. That's a very, very cool idea. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything else that, that we missed talking about Grounded and, and uh, your connection with plants or anything else like that? Our, uh, our next big goal and chapter of Grounded as we lay our roots here in Anacostia and have our brick and mortar location, experiential brick and mortar space, um, we're particularly passionate about creating greener spaces. So um, we'll be really taking the time to expand our planterior design offerings and also our corporate wellness offerings, making buildings all around the city greener as as big as you can imagine right now we're currently servicing a 60,000 square foot office building we're servicing their plants mm -hmm. and we're really excited about the opportunity of not only um, having our customers come to our brick and mortar but having businesses experience grounded whether it's taking a corporate wellness class or whether it's coming to our space and coming to our office to meet with us about putting greenery in their buildings hospital hospitals hotels schools restaurants the whole nine yards so that that's just like one other piece that we're evolving into as we you know set our foundation here with our brick and mortar very cool well uh i you know this year at plant week um the space is not open yet but i think next year at plant week if you're around actually all the time but i think next year you'll probably have an awesome event over there i imagine so it's really cool so yeah i just want to thank you for taking the time talking about the shop talking about plant week with me and uh yeah thanks thanks again yes thanks so much steve and Ruben. we appreciate you My guests on this episode of Rootbound were Mignon Hemsley and Danielle Doswell, the co-founders of Grounded, whose mission is to guide you towards a state of tranquility and mindful living through the power of plants. Check them out online at feelgrounded.com, and as soon as you can, check out their new brick-and-mortar space in Anacostia. Grounded is also one of the plant shops participating in DC Plant Week. Learn more about that at dcplantweek.com. If you like Rootbound and you want to help support the show, visit rootboundpodcast.com slash support to find all the ways you can help support this independent podcast, including supporting on Patreon. Rootbound is hosted by me, Steve Ellington. You know how on this podcast I always say I'm not really a houseplant guy? Well, during this DC Plant Week, I have actually more than doubled my houseplant collection, so maybe I am becoming a houseplant guy. Music by Christian Kriegeskota. Fake ads by David Lonnie. Rootbound is a podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside, but if you can go outside, maybe you could start a plant week in your own city. I think it's a really fun idea. It's cool to think plants are cool!